What's up? Welcome back to Industries TV. I'm your host, Denary Boss. Today we have Father Shed with us. Yes, sir. Steve. How you doing? I'm doing good. Can't complain. All right. Happy Thank holidays. You. Happy holidays to you as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for allowing me to interview today. Of course, of course. All right. Yes, sir. We started in 2019 of April last year. Um, basically, my brand, it just stands for, um, the word blase is basically being implied about and knowing about the worldly things that go on in the world, but just not being interested or fascinated by them. So that's kind of what I stand for as an individual. I feel like that's a good thing to, to, to be like street smart and then not be involved in the streets, hypothetically. That's what people say, like, hey, I got a, I bought a new car for this, this, and this, and, you know, I got all this money, this, this, and this, and it's just like, okay, blase, blase. You know what I'm saying? That's how we kind of use the word. And uh, my mental health is uh, actually based upon, like, uh, one of my stories that I kind of went through in 2019, 2018, and uh, I just kind of focused on it and made it a brand. That's dope. I like the fact that you tapped on uh, knowing about industries, because if you don't know, if you don't have two sides of the story, mm -hmm. how can you flip the script? I mean, if you're not in the streets, that's fine, but you have to know about what's going on in the streets to step mm -hmm. out outside of the streets being. That's where I came from. Yeah. It's all around me, so you have to have a way. You have to do it in a way to make it make sense for you. So the that's fact true. that you're doing it, blase, blase, hey, hey blase, blase. Yeah. And I see you got some merch with us today. Of course, of course. This is dope. So yes, you see sir. on the back, you got check all your strong friends. And then on the front, you got mental wealth. So when you look strong for everybody checking on? Yeah, nobody was checking on me though during that time, but you know, I guess we'll tap into that. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the community engagement that you recently um, had an event about. Oh yeah, uh, so we just did two homeless drives. Um, we did one for the like the weekend of Thanksgiving. Uh, we gave out over a hundred hoodies. Uh, that time we didn't have food much. We had some tacos and stuff that we just kind of walked and handed out waters and stuff. Uh, just kind of smaller, and then uh, I made a video of it, and I, at the end of the video, I said, hey, let's do it again on Christmas Day. Uh, shoot, I had a, I cannot cuss? Bet. <laughs> I, a, I ain't going to do it right now, but anyways, uh, I had a lot of people um, hit me up about it, and uh, they wanted to get uh, become a volunteer. They wanted to donate money, uh, food, clothes. Uh, we had a team of people uh, put together like 100 backpacks with Bibles. Uh, it was Bible socks toothpaste, toothbrushes, and deodorant. Uh, then we had a vegan company come out. They gave uh, some hot dogs and, uh, what else they give? I think it was like hot dogs and water. And then my homeboy Quincy, he came out for Uncommon. Then my homegirl Leah, she came out with uh, DTX. Uh, and we all just gave our hoodies. And then I had my, my people, my family, my close family came and, we, and they served plates. So it was a big event, man. We probably served over like 150 to 200 uh, homeless that day. It was really big. And uh, it was it was just, just a welcoming feeling like, to be given on Christmas Day, you know what I'm saying? Usually we like to receive a lot, but when you go out and give, it's just so much more, you know, just a great feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but you know. That's dope that you could do that for the community and just, you know, do more than just give uh, random things, but you took mm -hmm. it upon yourself to give back your own brand. Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna know who I am. This is what we do. So that's pretty dope. Um, yeah. Do you have any more plans? to host any more community engagement soon? Uh, yeah, we're trying to set up a, a shoe drive in January. So hopefully in January we can get something set up. Uh, we're going to definitely need as many hands on deck. Uh, we're going to need a lot of donations because shoes are expensive, you know what I'm saying? And trying to bring everything out the company and out my personal pockets, it does get hard. It's not impossible, but it does get hard, you know what I'm saying, when I have other obligations. So I'm definitely going to need as many people as possible for that, and I can keep y'all updated. Babe, I love what you do. Can you tell the people... Uh, where they can uh, reach out to you if they would like to help you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, y'all can follow me on uh, the Blase Company uh, on IG, or y'all can email us at theblasecompany at gmail.com. That's B-L-A-S-E-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y at gmail.com. You heard what he said. Um, do we have anything new to expect from Boys Don't Cry? Uh, yeah, we actually are trying to uh, relaunch it and everything. We um, we thought that was like a, 
a thing that was kind of before its time because we, when we dropped it, there wasn't a lot of hype and stuff behind it. And I figured a lot of people didn't really understand the backstory of it. But um, we do, we are trying to bring that back in like January, February, and, uh, and more in our spring collection and stuff. We want to do like some nylon shorts and mesh shorts and stuff like that that we want to try to play with. Oh, I'm excited to see this. So your brand is unisex. You got a lot of bo uh, both female and male awareness. Yeah, for sure. Our audience, our, tar our target audience is actually women, but with the idea that men will wear it. You know what I'm saying? So if I put it on and, and, and male, males see me in it, they're like, oh, okay, like I like that. It's fashionable. It's chill, whatever. They like the big wording on the back. But I try to gear it by putting a lot of females in it because I feel like females sell clothes no matter what. Like females are really the really the high end of fashion. Like they kind of set the new waves and stuff like them, like that. Sorry. That's dope. So you're a stylist and a designer yourself, of course. So uh, tell me about your stylist and your designer journey. When did you start? And how did you become comfortable doing what you're doing uh, for today? The fact that you tapped on women and you see the lane that they have and you made it a lane of your own. Mm. How did you do that? Uh, well, I started with photography. Um, I was a beauty photographer. So I dealt with women all day, all the time. Um, fashion and stuff like that, different stylists and stuff. And it, and it always kind of struck my interest. Like, But then once I became a photographer and I wanted to tap into like higher end things, I realized I had to tap into different elements. I had to know more about makeup. I had to know more about styling. I had to know more about outfits and all that type of stuff. I really wasn't in, in, uh, into at the time, but I knew I had to tap in that to elevate that business. So um, I really, really tapped into like designing my own clothes and stuff uh, last year. Like I said, when I first started the brand, my mom had a cricket machine. And, wait, uh, wait, not to interrupt you. You started this last year? Yeah, this last oh, year. Oh, this is dope. Yeah. It's only been a year? It's only been a year. Ah, oh, man. You're doing oh, your thing. You're doing your thing. Appreciate it. Appreciate it for real, for real. Yeah, it's, it, and it's, been, it's been a journey for real. I've had my ups and downs. But I, uh, like I said, I, I started the, uh, I had the idea really just on a plane. Right before I came back from Cali visiting my family, my mom was like, hey, when you get back, I need you to help me make some orders. Because she was doing like customs and stuff on her cricket machine. I was like, all right, whatever, I don't even know what that is, but cool, got back down. Didn't know it was as hard as it was, cutting that vinyl, peeling that vinyl and stuff, but uh, just doing it every day with her just kind of made me be like, man, I can really be doing my own thing. I see how much money she was bringing in from it. I'm like, man, I can do my own thing. So instead of doing like customs, I just put a brand on it and I came up with Blase. And then um, that's when we came out with Boys Don't Cry and we came out with just the Blase company with the barcode underneath. That was like the first two things. And then, like I said, it was very slow. It wasn't a lot of orders, it wasn't nothing, but I was just, proud of it at the moment then I went through my depression in uh September and then that's kind of how we got here so mm. so tell me more about boys don't cry because there's a narrative with that mm -hmm. and I just want to see where you're going with it uh so boys don't cry really just kind of comes from growing up in a childhood and in, in a culture the black culture that is um where where it seems like men are stigmatized by being soft if they you know what i'm saying if you're crying you know it may be something small like little kid get hit on the football field and then he crying you got all these men around man don't cry don't cry you good you get up but like you know what i'm saying like they never really allowed the black male to just feel you know what i'm saying like we never were able to just go through an emotion feel how we feel and then grow from it like it was always like we had to stop because hey boys don't do that boys don't do that or men don't cry like you see us crying you ain't never seen me cry have you and then it's just kind of like you put a stigma on us that like damn we maybe we don't cry maybe we shouldn't be crying or maybe that maybe that is a, a sign of softness and I feel like that's what makes us hard in due time so now when we marry or we trying to build relationships with friendships mm -hmm. it just makes us like a hard rock and we can't really get into it you know what I'm saying I get that so your so what you're doing here is not to silence it but to uh, bring it bring awareness to it yeah of course to bring more awareness to it. Same thing with mental health. Uh, you know, people that deal with anxiety, depression, and stuff like that, we definitely want to bring more awareness that it's okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Male, female. And, and it's crazy because it's a small message, but it's touched so many people. Like, a lot, I feel like a lot of people know the message. Boys don't cry. A lot of people know the message. Um, uh, check on your strong friends, but we don't really elevate it to a level that we see past just those words. We, we don't really see that there's really somebody that may be around us that we need to check on. Or there's somebody around that, that may be depressed or sad or suppressing feelings and stuff like that that we need to, you know, be there for.
future plans and investments? Do you have anything you would like the people to know that's coming up next? Uh, yeah, we got some uh sweatsuits coming up. I'm so, excited. Yeah, those are gonna be those are gonna be a big lick. I think I I hope that I hope that they push the same message, and I hope that with everything else that it pushes the brand enough and what we stand for enough that we don't have to slap the message on everything. You know what I'm saying? Like people have a clear understanding of what the brand stands for because the the sweatsuits won't have like check on your strong friends and boys don't cry. It would just say the company name. And so I hope that with all of this, it's kind of to push the company. You know what I'm saying? It's like if Nike put just do it on everything and then you buy a Nike t-shirt, it's like you still get the idea. Like we know we see a Nike check. It's like just do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to see just do it to just do it. You know it's Nike. So that's hopefully, that's been kind of like the element. Now we're trying to tap back in so people know the name of the brand and so we can put a face to it and stuff like that. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming like that with just kind of pushing the brand and getting more into like our, our graphics and stuff like that as well. That's pretty dope. I feel like uh, what you said about people knowing the brand, they will know the brand, especially the way you uh, are actively engaged into, communi into the community, uh, which is dope as well. Um, mm. You're actually encouraging more people to uh, get involved into the community. So the fact that you're doing this, it, it's, it's bigger than just a self thing. It's so big um, to help people in our community and be the ones to pull, up, pull us up. So that's pretty dope. Uh, you got anything else you want the people to know? Uh, nah, not that I can think of. Um, I mean, just just tap in, man. Tap into to your community. Tap into your, your relationships, your friendships with others. And uh, just make sure that that at the at the peak of it all, that you come out a better person every time that you you push for that, because you don't want to be trying to elevate just for social media followers. You don't want to be like, hey, I'm becoming this person because I want to appeal to this crowd. Just be yourself and elevate off of that. Oh, you heard it the best. Father Shed, thank you so much yes, for sir, interviewing. Steve. Check out his brand. Check out what he does, because we will need more hands on deck. So y'all tap in. Let them know where they can find your socials. All right, you can follow my personal page at Driven Image. Uh, that's kind of like my photography and personal page. And then uh, you can follow the company page at the Blase Company on IG and on Twitter as well. All right. Fashion. I'm your host, Zanaria Bones. For more content like this, for more fashion and drip down, tap in and follow the page. Follow all the socials at Industries TV.